Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you, and we'd love to introduce Stance Socks. That old pack of white gym socks your mom used to buy you at the grocery store is now a thing of the past. Stance has changed the game. They brought art and good design to what used to be a boring old white stinky dead sock. Now when you show your ankle, you're also showing off what makes you special. <laughs> Whatever you're into, they got Star Wars socks, Harley Davidson socks. They even have Grateful Dead inspired socks. They got little ankle socks. It's not just cool colors and patterns. Stance is everything from running socks, ankle socks, hiking socks, and premium socks that you can wear at the office. Do me a favor right now, the church family. Stance has a great offer. Go to stance.com right now slash church, C-H-U-R-C-H, and you'll get a free pair of socks with any purchase. That's right, a free pair of Stance stocks, socks with any purchase. That's stance.com slash church, and you get your free pair of socks. This offer is only available for a limited time, so get your socks now at stance.com slash church, because if they're not stance, they're just a pair of socks. The church is also brought to you by 23 and Me. Listen, it's time. We're living in an incredible time. You know me. I'm an only child. I lost my parents when I was pretty young, so I didn't get the chance to ask them any of the questions about their health, their parents, or what kind of genes I'm dealing with. But with 23 and Me, I just spit in the tube, bang, and I found out a ton about myself and the people that I came from. Listen, I think it's a great experience. I found out I'm like uh, American Indian. I'm not really a Seminole. I got to be like a Tiano Indian or one of those Indians. I got a little bit of African blood in me. Like my parents come from Spain, that type of stuff. 23 Me reports do not diagnose diseases or describe the overall likelihood of developing any disease. 23andMe tests selected genetic variants only. Visit 23andMe.com slash church. That's C-H-U-R-C-H for important test information. And order your health and ancestry kit today at 23andMe.com slash church. That's 23andMe.com slash church. And you can meet your genes in 125 plus personalized genetic report. That's 23andMe.com slash church. Find out who you are. Lee, kick this motherfucking meal. Everybody did how to do that. There was at one point in the mid-70s towards... Late like 70s. 70, 77, 78. Yeah. The Kinks did it with Superman. I want to be like Superman. The Stones did it with uh, some girls and uh, the other one they did... That they ate a bag of dicks in fucking yeah, Europe. Kiss, Kiss, Kiss was on the it. fence. Kiss was like, they, you had to put a beat out that was danceable. Yeah, something that you could dance to. We don't. Yeah, and I could just imagine going into Kiss and people like those bands and saying that, like, your number one hit has to have something that they can play at the clubs. They actually thought. <clears throat> that the future of rock and roll was going to be infused with lots of disco. So Kiss, like Paul Stanley, and Gene, they made a decision. Because after, that was 1978, and the, in 79, they put out Dynasty, which had I Was Made For Loving You, Sure No Something, I'm very for disco. Loving you. Very, very disco. disco. Yeah, and then they had an out, that whole album after that was super disco as well, Kiss Unmasked. So they thought that the trend was they thought they had to make a movie it was a calculated move we got to go more disco than rock we got it while everyone else was getting heavier because in 78 van halen busted out and they weren't trying to do disco and then ozzy came out with uh you know blizzard of oz and uh some some bands went heavier some bands chose to go more disco and kiss chose disco for a bit and they went you know they went south and just completely turned into like a joke i have not seen this about three weeks ago i got home you know when you come home from the comedy store you have a bag of edibles and reefer and fucking pills that they give you. all that shit from speed weed all that and shit from speed absolute weed, man, extracts Gino, yeah, yeah they just absolutely they hook they it up. Care you. so sometimes you, you have that bottle of water with you in the car 
Says I'm I'm on low okay and I'm popping shit, right? I'm popping whatever they gave me. <laughs> Pills, <laughs> edibles, I'm headed home. By the time I get over the dry land, which is once you hit Ventura, yeah. That's where it starts getting little tingles and shit. But I'm all right, I'm three quarters there. If it hits me too quick, I just stop at Yum Yum Donuts and get a bran muffin to calm that fucking savage down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Couple nights ago, put on "If This Is Love" by Van Halen. It's gonna say live from Seattle. When MTV first came out, this was one of the first videos in their rotation. I don't know if you remember it. Me and my wife were just talking. Great song. And I just—it's on the second side of one of my the one with Mean Streets on it. Uh, um, the one with Unchained too. Uh, Fair Warning. Fair Warning is one of my all-time favorite bands. Great album. You know, uh, not Oakland. Yeah, Oakland. Oakland. Whatever the fuck it is. Seattle, Oakland. Whatever. <laughs> is he is he singing with the bottle of Jack Daniels? It is. Out? It is. Like when you watch this, you go, you know what? This was the best Van Halen ever was. I mean, I know they made a lot more money with Sammy Hagar. And the albums in Sammy Hagar, but if you ever have a chance, put on Van Halen. So this is love from wherever the fuck. Six twelve and eighty one. Oakland Six twelve eighty one. This was actually a video that was on MTV every hour on the hour. Oh, dude, me and Joe Rogan met him at the Comedy Store, dude, like two thousand six or something like that, and. All he wanted to do was talk about like chicks, the chicks he got on the road, and it, it was he would just couldn't stop talking about the good old times. He said that he would give his roadies a backstage passes, like a stack of them, and they would put their initials on them. And their goal was to go out and find the hottest chicks in the crowd, give them the passes, and if he ended up having sex with them, and there he'll give two hundred bucks to whoever <laughs> initial was on that pass. Isn't that brilliant? For someone who's single, you know what I mean? It's a brilliant idea. Oh, fuck. Who doesn't right. want to go backstage? You know what I mean? <laughs> he said some of them went with their boyfriends. Oh, too. yeah. And so we had boyfriends. A, yeah, so they, they're That's like, fun. I'm just going to go backstage just to say Five hi minutes. for a little bit. Just for a little bit. And he said he would see the boyfriends just like <laughs> waiting for him up in the stands. <laughs> Crying. They just fucking spent their milk money. On a ticket Dude, and the girls so backstage, disrespectful. just oh, blowing them. Because uh, in those days, there's no conversation. You just blow him. He makes Harvey Weinstein look like a fucking preacher. Yeah, that guy. He just takes his dick out. Yeah. They just get on the bus. <laughs> they suck it. They give him a kiss. And there was no pictures in those days. Can you imagine? So there was no proof. Can you imagine all the Me Too's that would come out of like David Lee Roth ran for a, a, like government official? Let me tell you something. It's really interesting that you said that when uh, the Twisted System movie came out. Uh, Rudy Sarso called one day when we were talking, and he goes, what'd you think of it? And, you know, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I told everybody. I thought it was a goof, but I enjoyed it. At least I enjoyed it because they're only going to get better now. These stories are only going to get better. Yeah. They're going to make them better and better and better, and they're going to be fucking phenomenal. Uh, but he goes, you know, what's really crazy if, it, if the Me Too movement, he goes, this was beyond Me Too. Yeah, that music industry all those years, they were beyond me too. Yeah, there was no conversation, there was no pictures, there was no nothing. It was your word against me and my fucking roadies. Yeah, I went back there and they 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 rate. What are you talking about? You went back there with your teddies out, and you know it was fucking crazy. Those girls don't even uh, they didn't even raise their hands in the seventies. <laughs> didn't even raise their hands. Not that I was a part of it or I saw it. But I heard, and we've all heard, we've bumped into different people that have talked about Paulie Shaw. Paulie Shaw used to get his dick sucked like nothing. You know, when Paulie Shaw in 1990, when he came into your town, Warlock. Remember Warlock? Warlock was his from nickname the store. or something? Yeah, great guy. Oh, Warlock from the store. Warlock. Okay. He Warlock was... was the guy with the passes. Okay, that was his partner. Three blondes. Yeah, if I saw his face, I would. I, yeah, because I want to go name up to the, You want to go? It, it takes a certain type of animal. Yeah. To go up to women and go, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. You're uh, Mr. Rod's type. Would you like to go back there and say hello? No cameras allowed. Leave the phone outside. 
Yeah. It takes a certain animal to go in there. And it's, it takes a certain woman to think she's going to go in there. I mean, in, in a perfect world, you're going to go in there and they don't want nothing from you. But it's not a perfect world. They're either going to pass you around. There was an episode of Law and Order last week where a, a band was huge. Then they went down over the years, and they were playing like bars now. Yeah, most bands. But the guy was the pyro tech guy, made the pyros too strong and lit the bar on fire, and 11 people died. And the chick that stuck up from was a groupie. She said, I couldn't have been him because I was in the van giving him a head, and all the other people were like, no, you weren't. You were standing next to us. But that was just, and they even said to him, did this usually happen to you? And he goes, it happens all the time. What is somebody thinking? That they'll just go into somebody's tour bus, suck their dick, and walk out? Well, I mean, isn't it like a point of pride? Like, there's a, a comic that I, I see every once in a while who has a story about, I forget which one it was, but one of them. And, like, to her, it was it's, it's like a point of pride. I mean, I think that's sort of the difference with Harvey Weinstein. Is like, I don't, from what I heard, these musicians weren't offering anything. It's just they were the no, they were the biggest no. musicians, and they're like, no, you get to suck my Jimmy dick Jimmy Page is there. You're going back to the sucker's dick. He's not going to give you guitar lessons. <laughs> or teach you how to play the ukulele. Put you on an album. I'll put you on an album. You know, there was no, there was no nothing. You were going back to the meet the band. Yeah, pretty hard to meet to rock stars. That's that's a hard one. That was a hard one in those yeah. days. Even now, to come out and go thirty years ago, what what happened thirty years ago? What happened? Who was in the room? You know, who's going to remember? Were there drugs involved? No, we didn't. Have, <laughs> there were drugs involved. You know, and that, that thwarts your thinking. God knows what you were doing. You know, there's so many fucking angles. That's why it's so hard to uphold a rape case, even if it's textbook. It's so up. It's so hard to get the conviction because they destroy the woman on the witness stand. She don't want to go through that. It's a fucking nightmare. But if you, what are you going to say? That in 1979 you went to see Ted Narrowsmith and, and Steven Tyler fucked you in the ass against your will? Where are you going to go with that? Where are you going to go with that? Yeah. I First of all, you're 60. The DNA has left your ass four times over. <laughs> that Lodi shot in your ass, that DNA. <laughs> I'm wrong there. DNA stays there forever, but. You know what I'm saying? I think. I don't fucking know. I have no idea. You know, next thing you know, she goes on 23 and me. That would be great. Hey, you know what? Shit ain't, shit ain't like that no more, though, man. Because no. I went uh, I, I went to see Corn and I was backstage, and there's everyone's wives there with their kids. They let their kids on stage. Like, Corn's playing, and their kids are running on stage. And backstage, it's it's nothing like you would imagine. You would think, like, oh, shit, they're partying, and the, you know, there's all these chicks, and, and everyone's getting naked. Not at all. Complete opposite. Well, the the listen. If you went into Allison Chain's room today, there's no booze out. Yeah. There's Canada Dry Ginger Ale. And yeah. Everybody's taking pics <laughs> yeah. and they're talking yeah. about tomorrow to go yeah. play golf. Yeah. What happens? What do you think it was like in Soundgarden and Allison Chain's dressing room in 1994? That's Are a, you? That's a little nuts? different. <laughs> do you have any idea what Allison Chain's fucking dressing room was like? You didn't go in there to micro smoke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not gonna micro smoke the vape pen. <laughs> there was no. Yeah, what were they doing? Like, you think they were no, doing heroin before the show? You think? I is it possible? Yeah. Oh, they were on stage on heroin. I get, there's a there's a maintenance amount, and when you become a junkie, you like know, I it? knew junkies that had to go to work in the morning, and they had a maintenance amount. Hmm. Their eyes get pinned. But they don't nod. They could still function. And they could still function. At times, you'll see their eyes going. But at least, it's like when I smoke dope in the morning. I don't smoke dope to get zonked. I smoke dope just to wake me up with my coffee, get the day going. A little hit? Just a little... Oh, no, I'll do, I'll do two or three bong hits, you know. Oh, I mean. shit. Okay. I get the wing going. I got I got. As shit. soon as you wake up? No, I'm not that much of an animal. What time do you well, usually smoke for the first time? Right, let's the first get, time. Let's say I get up at 7. Okay. When I walk out, I make a cup of coffee. I pee, make a cup of coffee, and then my bodyguard attacks me. Okay. So I can't do nothing. So I got to sit next to her watching some bad cartoon. 
<laughs> just god awful cartoon. <laughs> what is she like? I, I, that's the, she's been into the Descendants. Don't know what that is. One, two, and three. The chick with the purple hair and the other one with the uh, blue hair. Is it a movie? It's a movie. It's okay. a, you, but you want to sit there and stab your neck? <laughs> she's putting on the same Descendants. Yeah. Like the other day, she tricked me. She goes, "Daddy, you want to watch Descendants too?" I go, "All right." It's a it's a change. I get out there. You put your little headset on, your little earplug no, in. I sit there to a next podcast. to her. I sit next to her straight. You know, you got to give them the attention they deserve. And then after 10 minutes, I go, didn't I see this last night? And she goes, I lied to you. I wanted to watch it again. <laughs> so it's just bad TV. Yeah. So I, and you know, Toy Story, uh, the latest one, 4. Oh, brilliant. Toy Story 4 was great. And Lion that King. Was brilliant. I took two edibles and put the 3D glasses on. <laughs> the Lion King. You know, tremendous. you know how good Toy Story 4 was? Right in the middle of Toy Story 4, that big earthquake hit. We were at the theater at the Ark, like, going, oh, damn. A lot of people were running out of the theater. We went into the exit, you know, the little the door threshold, the exit we were waiting there. And, dude, it was going for, like, a minute. And then when it was over, like, I wanted to see the fucking ending, dude. So I, took, I asked Draco and my wife, like, you guys want to stay? Because I'm down. And they're like, okay. So we went back and <laughs> watched the yeah. rest of the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. It was so fuck. good. Who gives a fuck? Mm -hmm. So I get up. I talk. Once I start talking, I'm all right. Then I get on the computer. I see who emailed me. I look at my schedule for the day. What time is this? Eight, nine? So now we got to be talking about quarter to eight. Okay. So 45 minutes after I get up, I go to my back bathroom. I open up the door because it's the yard. Yep. And I take a shit. And I take bong hits while I shit. So the cough pushes out the shit without me <laughs> trying. Okay. And nobody dies of a fucking stroke here. You push. always cough when you smoke? Always? No, but when you... When you go, the shit flies out of your ass. Like, okay, no I didn't friction. Know that. I didn't know well, that. What do you think you're dealing with? Joy Bananas? You know I invent <laughs> different things every week. <laughs> I got a different adventure every week. So, yeah, when you hit that bong head, it's a fucking bong head. At 7.45 in the morning, what do you think is going to happen to you? You just gonna go, <sighs> like you're smoking a cigarette? That first... <clears throat> That first, that first, you feel that first six inches just come out. <laughs> it's like a baby's head when it comes out of the snatch. Ooh. And just the head snats there for a little while. And then I pack another bowl with six inches out. And when I hit that second one, you just feel it coming out. Like Wait, just leaving. hanging? You leave it hanging? Oh, yeah. He's an acrobat. He's, he's, a, he's a veteran of Circus de Soleil, this motherfucker. <laughs> I pushed the rest out in the second cough. I wiped <laughs> And I fucking done. I already lost a pound, and now I'm high. I don't drink any more coffee. I start drinking cold water now to get my body going. And that's it. And then once I take a shower and eat breakfast and stuff, where, depending where I'm going, I'll do a few bong hits before I fucking leave. But you just had the bong hits. Well, then you gotta have another one. Damn. You can't walk on one leg. Yeah. You're, you're a gangster, man, because I really... I don't smoke as much weed as I used to at all. Like I like I like taking time off. Well, you know, I, I I can't smoke the weed I used to anymore because I have mercy. Yeah, I gotta pay more attention to places I go to. Yeah, you can't go in there smelling like fucking Johnny Labamba. Like you just walk out of a fucking <laughs> head shop. You know, you gotta be a little fucking decent. So if I gotta go somewhere where I'm gonna be there for a while, I just pop two edibles. I'll pop two fucking edibles. I can't do any edibles, man. I'm a big yeah. pussy. No, no. There's so much shit going on in my life, you know, that that um, my main focus in life is peace. I just want peace and harmony. I don't want any uh, um, bullshit in my life. So I I avoid bullshit, man, like the plague. I don't, I don't want to deal with anything. I just want peace, quiet. I want to be with my family, teach jujitsu. I do comedy just purely for fun i sprinkle that in my life as long as it doesn't affect anything boom i put it in and i'm good i don't need anything else that's it what new conspiracy theories do we have to discuss today oh man new, new ones new. give me Oof. some new ones <sighs> new ones you gave me the flat earth you gave me the jimmy Hendrix <sighs> throwing his wife off the balcony uh i didn't know nah, that wasn't me that may have no, I think it was you. Somebody told that me. It must Jimmy. have been Sam Triple. They, they threw Jimmy. It could have been Sam. Them throwing Jimmy Hendrix's girlfriend off the balcony. I'm just really entertained by following DC and what's going on. I'm super entertained by that. That's that's my real. That's Game of Thrones times a hundred. When you find out how the, what the real Game of Thrones is like, shit. 
It's fucking fascinating. You know, I'm, I'm down with every day. I spend two hours catching up on what has happened that day. Because in, in, you're getting from 90 percent of what you're getting from the mainstream media is bullshit. So where do you where do you read the stuff then? You gotta well, it's by process of elimination. You know, like the ninety uh, percent of the mainstream media is uh, not the truth. So you know, if you're searching for the truth. I'm, I like the truth. I don't like being bullshitted. I like right. I like knowing how they're f- trying to fuck with my brain. Uh, so by process of elimination, you know, okay, you just turn on CNN and go, okay, this is all bullshit. So let's try to find the truth. It's not that. So um, there's a lot of indep- independent media outlets. I like I like listening to X22 report, SGT report. Those two right there, they'll give you the good shit right there. It's uh, true reporting all on YouTube. All great stuff, man. X-22, that's the best. That's like when um, those shootings happened last week. They weren't, a, you know, the people that are following what's going on uh, were uh, expecting it. They're like, oh, man, they're going to they need something to clog up the news cycles because a lot of shit is going down right now with the D class. Man, people are going down with it the, between the D class and. And um, Epstein's Island, man, a lot of people in trouble, big, powerful people. So anytime something like that happens, they always, it wouldn't surprise me if, um, you know, those shootings were, uh, there was more people involved than were being told because there are multiple witnesses saying there was multiple shooters. And that's pretty common in these cases. Like there's multiple shooters, like people are like, they're saying there was two or three shooters. They keep saying that. But the official story, what you're getting on the mainstream news, is that there was one shooter, crazy dude, you know, uh, trying to blame it on Trump. The dude in Dayton, Ohio, was a leftist. He was all, all about Elizabeth Warren. They're, they're keeping quiet about that because, you know, everybody wants Trump out. You know, they're trying to bury him. And like, why are they trying to bury him? Why is, the, why is 90% of the bullshit mainstream media trying to bury him? What's really going on? And then you look into it, and that's what's that's what the fascinating thing is like, why are they trying to bury Trump? You know, they try to pin him like CNN try to pin him, they try to turn all Mexicans against Donald Trump by um you know, Donald Trump was talking about MS thirteen and was saying they're animals, they're criminals, we gotta get them out. So then CNN goes, Look what Trump said about Mexicans. So they cut out the MS thirteen part and just said they're animals, they're criminals, and we gotta get them out. What does that tell you? What is that? They're trying to frame him. And then look what happened with uh, Russian collusion. You know what's going down? The D class is about not only wasn't and isn't tr- Trump a Russian spy, is they try to frame him with that. That's what the D class, that's what they're trying to bury. That's what the, that's why they're clogging the news cycles. It wouldn't surprise me if um, there was, um, you know, like they take a uh, schizophrenic, paranoid crazy kid and uh, fill them up with all this crazy shit that they need to need to do to drag him to a certain place put a gun in his hand and then have professionals do a bunch of shooting professionals get the fuck out of the way and they just you know, they got their patsy that wouldn't shock me stuff like that wouldn't shock me you know there's um you know who william cooper is no william cooper wrote the book behold the pale horse and he was a, a, a worked for the Office of Na- Navy Intelligence, and um, he figured out he was a whistleblower, and he figured out a lot of shit. He wrote a, like that book, and he wrote this in the book real quick. This is 1991. He wrote this. Check this out. It's just a little paragraph. The government encouraged the manufacture and importation of military firearms for criminals to use. This is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms, using drugs and hypnosis on mental patients in a process called Orion. The CIA inoculated uh, the desire in these people to open fire on schools and thus inflame the anti-gun lobby. This plan is well underway and so far is working perfectly. The middle class is begging the government to do away with the Second Amendment. Wrote that in 1991. It's what they do. They get some crazy kid, 
fill them up with all this propaganda. Anybody they want to blame it on. They want to blame it on Castro. They could take a crazy guy, make him like a Castro uh, fanatic, get him all crazy. They can't, they can't trust him to kill anybody because he's just crazy. Who knows what he's going to do? They just have to put him in the scene of the crime. They get some professionals, shoot up the place. They're all saying multiple shooters. Witnesses are saying there was multiple shooters are dressed in black. They look like professionals. San Bernardino, same thing. They're all, that's what people are saying. I don't know, that's what the witnesses are saying, people that were there. So it wouldn't shock me if uh, those shootings, um, they did happen. People died. People got their lives ripped apart and destroyed. But wouldn't you want to find out like who exactly did it? If you found out your one of your, like your mom got murdered and then the cops told you it was, it was uh, you know, Joe. But then other people kept telling, dude, it was Lee. It was Lee. Wouldn't you want to find out? Wouldn't you want to find out how it really went down? Instead of going, don't you say the cops said it was Joe. Don't disrespect me like that. The cops and he goes, dude, got to look into Lee, man. So is it, you know what I mean? But people get angry when you're saying, dude, what the official story uh, is saying, man, there's witnesses saying there was multiple shooters. Don't, doesn't that, don't you want to know how it really went down? Does There's been 240 something shootings. You know, something's not right. Something's not adding and up. They, and they all, when you look at all I'm those shootings, a, they all happen right at a time where people are going down. Some people are going to testify. All of them. All of them. There's a list. They could, but this is what's supposed to happen. This is supposed. To, this person is supposed to testify. Boom, shooting. This person's supposed to testify, boom, shooting. What they do, they clog. They don't even, like, you know, all this, all this gun control talk. It's almost like they don't even care really that much about, you know, passing gun control laws. It's not really about that. It's about arguing about that, taking up your time. Everyone has a certain amount of time to look into shit. So if they make, it seems like they're, um, if, you know, uh, it seems like they it's sloppy on purpose so all the conspiracy theorists could talk about it and spend a lot of time making podcasts about it and listen listen that's what they want it's like talk about it yeah sure they want gun control and sure they're going to piggyback on top of that you know while we're at it we might as well add a couple more gun control laws or whatever but it's not about that it's about clogging up the news cycle think about the shit that's going down right now the proof that Trump got framed for Russia is coming out. That's coming out. And people are getting busted. They're going down for it. Boom. Shootings happen. Two of them. Clogs up the news cycles. Everyone's talking about gun control, gun rights, and you know, you know, and and you know, while we're on gun rights, you know, there's nobody, nobody that can convince me that it makes sense for me to give up my guns that I have at my house just in case that alarm goes off and someone breaks in. Me and my wife got plans. We have got the plan. We talk about it. That alarm goes off. Someone's fucking getting shot. Right? So some crazy kid hopped up on pills, goes shoots up a mall. Does it make sense that I give up my guns because he did that? That does not make any sense that I have to give up my guns because there's some crazy people out there shooting people. If you were, I need my guns even more now. So oh, no, there's, no, so there's no you. way anybody will ever convince me that it makes sense for me to give up my guns because some crazy kid shot up a mall. Like it makes zero. How how does that make any sense? That doesn't make any sense. Now, how would you start? I mean, obviously all the. The gun violence are these fucking rifles, these high-powered rifles with fucking automatic clips and 250 fucking rounds and all this shit. How do we start to put a to chip away at this? How um, do we chip I, if away? I had a, if I had a bazooka, you wouldn't have to worry about me. It's like uh, you know, eighty people, eighty thousand people, eighty ninety thousand people a year die from car accidents. How come we're not trying to get rid of cars? And what about the eight hundred thousand kids that go missing every year? No one gives a shit. What about that? What about all the little, all the kids, all the the kids that are getting raped on that Epstein Island? Where's where's your hashtag Me Too right there? 
Why is it only hashtag me too if it's some fucking out of work aging actress who said that some fucking producer grabbed her tits in 1972? Oh, me too that? Oh, me too that? Let's me too that. But what about all these kids? 800,000, that's an FBI statistic. 800,000 to a million kids go missing. And then sure people go, <gasps> they'll fight them. They don't want to, they, they'll go, but most of those are like the, the dad stealing the kids away and the divorce and all that. I'm like, okay, okay. 800,000, let's just say 750,000 uh, are those cases are like, you know, uh, a domestic dispute and they steal the kid or whatever. If it was 20,000 kids a year to get kidnapped and nobody gives a fuck. No one's no me too in that shit. No one cares. You know what you, you if you tell them, if you tell them, uh, I bet if you told I talked, to, I talked about this on Sam's podcast too. I bet if I told you, if we just said, hey, fucking Epstein's murdering puppies on that fucking, island. oh, all the vegans, they'll go fucking nuts. They're murdering, but we got to save the puppies. We got to save the puppies. But kids, nobody gives a shit about kids. So shut the fuck up about your fucking gun logic and all that shit. You had no logic. You're worried about machine guns? You're worried about machine guns? Come on, man. If you're worried about machine guns, then I need a machine gun. You try, you're trying to take away machine guns? Shit, that means you need machine guns. Listen, Why are you trying to take away machine guns? When I'm walking down the block, I don't know what my statistics are of a car running a red light and hitting me. I know we have a lot of fucking uh, accidents and car accidents and the kids, I don't know what the fuck's going on with kids. I don't know who takes them. They take them to Mexico. I don't fucking know. What I do know is that I got to look at an exit sign now when I sit in the movie theater. I got, if I go to a garlic festival, I got to look around fences and shit to see what's going on with my wife and kid the same way you do. Because when you watch this shit, now we can't go to Walmart, you know. The other guy in Dayton shot people at one in the morning at night when they were in bar hopping. You know, this yeah. concerns me to the point where whatever the fuck it is, something has to be done. I mean, uh, what about Chicago? Chicago gets that every weekend. No one's doing shit about that. Chicago, Puerto Rico. I mean, listen, it's 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 what we're, we're, we're trying to figure out here is how to control. But what what if? What if the what if they are uh, being set up by some nefarious group? I think that listen, the Chicago thing is a fucking street beefs, and some guy gets shot with a twenty two, or some guys at a bar, or something like that. What concerns me is is if you go to Vegas to see Nine Inch Nails with Danny. You believe that if you ban machine guns, that that's not going to happen? No, no, no. I think that it'll just it just creates higher demand. And people will pay more. I, that, I believe it's not going to change shit. I don't know where it would start. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Look at it. Every day we look. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Last night I had to go to Burbank for something. You know how it starts? At 7 fucking 30. And I made a right on this fucking street. Right by the Nissan place on, uh, on fucking Lancashire. Oh, okay. That McDonald's is on the corner. And they have a gas station or a... AM, PM on the corner there. Right, the Riverside. Riverside, Riverside or whatever. Did you see what it, I was at the light and I looked and I saw a six inch rat go from the fucking side of the weeds down to a homeless tent. Ooh. That whole street is filled with homeless people. Right. So on my ride down, you know, you pass CVS and the ha and fucking the black hair cutting place. And I'm sitting there going, where do you start with the homeless people? Where do we start with the guns, Eddie? I don't know if taking away the machine guns is going to stop shooting. What I'm fucking telling you is. You know where we, we start? We got to keep our fucking eyes open. You know where open. we start? How? Uh, by not ignoring the fact that witnesses said there were multiple shooters and get to the bottom of that. Maybe we'll find answers to as how it really starts. So in El Paso, there's witnesses. There's multiple, multiple shooters. In many of the, sh the shootings, there's they, there's witnesses saying there was multiple shooters. The one in Parkland, there's a teacher, a teacher saying, um, "I opened the door and then I, there I saw, twenty feet away from me, 
the killer. He was in uh, armored helmet. He looked like a SWAT member shooting. She says this. Like, wait a minute. It was a kid that did it. He wasn't a, some big ass dude in SWAT gear. You know, not that the SWAT team did it. I meant like gear, like, you know, he had like he had armor, body armor, and a helmet, and a fucking gun. We need to get to the bottom of that instead of ignoring that. Like, why are we ignoring that? That's the problem. No. Always... Why are we ignoring all the, the mental pills that and, the, and the, the, the crazy pills that all these kids are on? Why are we ignoring that? I'm going to tell you something. And if you remember, this kid from El Paso, the kid from the Garlic Festival, and the kid that shot up the movie theater during Batman or whatever the fuck. <clears throat> you remember that fucking police mug shots? They mm -hmm. look like they were high on something. Yeah. Like fucking gone. Like, yeah. you know, they're saying that this kid in El Paso ain't saying much, that he's just sitting there kind of like in shock, you know, that he doesn't know what happened. Look at the dude from the the Colorado shooting, the movie theater, the Batman Right, shooter. that that one. That guy, was, he was, yeah, remember his picture? He was yeah. all fucking But they, they ignore that. They ignore the pharmaceutical side of it. You know, they ignore that. But That's, so who, who? They want to go out like... Maybe that'll make a difference. Is if we it, attack that, taking away guns, like, ain't gonna make a difference. But Something is it the government like, behind it, or is it like? That's some... the question. That's the question. That's what we need to look into. What what is going on here? What's like, going on? Why are coincidentally these shootings happening when big shit is about to pop in the government? We need to look into that. Like a like a, det a detective would look into that. Not a happen? detective wouldn't just say, "Okay, case solved. It's over." What was what was happening when Vegas went down? Um, there was a big trial going on. I think he's got all this shit in his phone. That's why I love the <laughs> So, like, he here's my question for you guys, because I I'm a little bit more on the liberal side with guns. I, I I've never had guns. Like, I don't really want one. But I spent six months in Israel, where at every mall, every McDonald's, everything they have army with metal detectors. Because we probably can't get rid of guns, but do you do you think people would be okay with that, with having metal detectors and having retired um, army people everywhere? Like I, um, October second, two thousand seventeen, the Benghazi mastermind Abu Katala goes on trial. That same night, the Las Vegas massacre happened. I don't know, maybe it was a coincidence. I mean, I can go on. There's a whole list of all the shootings and what happened. Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's not true, but. I don't know. There's a, like the Vegas shooting. There's a lot of like weird shit about that. <laughs> they, no one's talking about it no more. That's gone. They just, it's gone. Let that go. Why? Look at all the people that died. Why are they letting that go? 58 people. Why are they letting that go? Why are they bury that? I, like I said, I'm not here. Yeah. Trivializing it or making fun or. My I'm just saying we got to look into I wanna know. what really went down. Who. Who was really behind? I want to know killing. what really went down, and how to stop this. You have a child. Yeah. I have a child. Someday Lee's gonna be married and have a child. People who listen to the show have a child. Yeah. <clears throat> the last thing you need is to be at a movie theater, an yeah. ice skating rink, yeah. and one of these retards pulls up. I mean, is it smart to? I mean, we all want uh, a solution. Wouldn't. Uh, one of the steps to the solution be like, let's find out what really happened. Why are people saying there were multiple shooters that looked like they were dressed like with body armor? I, that, that's, that's some pretty important shit right there. That's important shit. If there was multiple uh, shooters, uh, it's pretty important. But wouldn't, wouldn't Walmart have cameras? Exactly. Let's see that. Uh, yeah. let's, see that. let's see that. Let's see that. Do you think they'll release it? Do they usually release that stuff? Did they release any of the footage from? You think uh, no Mandalay idea. Bay has any cameras anywhere? Yeah, they should. In yeah. the rooms, though? Uh, you don't need the cameras in the rooms to figure out what the fuck is going on. Um, except for the rooms, there's cameras everywhere, right? right? Like, wouldn't you be able to see, like, dudes, like, lugging all that shit? None of that got released, right? I don't know. Maybe it's illegal to release it. It's gangster shit going on, man. It's gangster shit going on. A lot of people dying, you know, and uh, a lot of clues, a lot of witness testimony being ignored and, and covered up and buried. I wonder why. Scary shit. Scary shit. I just want them to stop. I just want 
you know, uh, yesterday in New York, a motorcycle backfired on Times Square, and people ran like it was Godzilla. People ran down the street like it was a fucking Godzilla. What, do you, did I tell you what happened to me yesterday? What? I go to the doctor's office. I'm minding my own business. I pull in. I park. I walk. I go to the office. I show them my license. I pay the deductible. I fucking go in. They wave me. I talk to the lady. She takes my blood pressure. I sit down. She, lady comes back. She goes, it's going to be about 10, 20 minutes. We're running behind today. I go, all right, no worries. I got nowhere to be. Next thing you know, a fucking alarm goes off. Me being the savage that I am, I just get up. <laughs> I don't really even want to get up because I know it's probably bullshit. And they come on, that there's a fire in the building. Everybody's got to leave. Dog, when I peeked, I saw people running for their lives, you know, because this shit gets into your psyche now. This stuff gets into your psyche. And now you can't live normally. You cannot, you walk around. There's people who are, Eddie, there's people who watch the news every night and believe every word to the T. Most and, people, 85% and 85%. Of people. And I'm not putting those people down. They really don't know a life outside that news. You know, I'm not saying I'm a five beta cap or I'm smarter than anybody else. But when I watch Eyewitness News and they go, tornado, 75 million in danger. And all of a sudden they show Iowa and they show corn, corn farms. I don't see nobody standing out there. Right. How are they in danger? You know, ABC, they use big words. The uproar about blah, blah, blah. What uproar are you talking about? I, I talk to 200 people a day. Nobody's mentioned it. So well, it's like they're selling you a bill of goods that's not even has nothing to do. They got to keep you. They got to keep you What's afraid. It? They got to keep the fear level high. Be, otherwise, why would you need them? I really want you know to look I mean? into shark attacks every year. How many fucking shark attacks happen every year? The last two weeks, they talk about a shark attack every day. It's what hand they show you. They have ten fingers, but every day they show you the same three fucking fingers. Well, I mean, to me, it's the same thing as, like, so comedy clubs. They're essentially bars. Some of them are care if they put on a good show, but most of them, they only care if they get people there so they can sell drinks. That's their business. TV news, they sell advertising. They just want you to watch. They don't... I mean, that's kind of why I guess maybe the YouTube thing would be a good place to go because even newspapers, they sell advertising. It's not... They don't really care what... The news is that they all they care is if they sell advertising. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, uh, you know, uh, radio, newspapers, TV. Since day one of their inception, have their purpose. The internet. The purpose. The purpose of the internet was to program you and sur uh, surveil everybody easier. From day one, that's the whole purpose of it. The is whole purpose it, of radio wasn't like, oh, I wish we could um, figure out a way to transport you know, music through the airwaves and, and entertain people. We really need to entertain people. No, it's like how, how uh, people that are, are running countries and empires, all they're concerned about is keeping their power and, keep, and controlling the masses' minds because the masses have the power. If they knew the truth, they have the power. So it's all about controlling minds. So the radio was like, ooh, this is going to be a great way to control their minds. And then TV, oh, we got a better way to control their minds. And then the internet, they've been working on the internet for a long time. It was a way, it's not for entertainment, it's a way to control our minds. Because if they can't control our minds, they have no power. So that's what it's all about. We are living in a fucking dream. All this shit that we grew up with. Think about like the movie like Jaws. I I will not go in the goddamn ocean because of Jaws. You know what that does to you? You watch Jaws? It gets fucking people afraid of the goddamn water. 
You know what? I'm so goddamn afraid of sharks that I want my son to watch Jaws so he doesn't do stupid shit like deep sea diving. You know what I mean? I don't want him to go in the ocean. You know, I'll be scared of fucking death for him, you know? So I'm going to sit him down and make him watch Jaws and, and scare the fuck out of him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to use that shit on him. That's some, you know, some CIA shit. We, you know, we're in this world that has been, you think, you think people, oh, but technology, te technology, technology. We are, what are you talking about? We could have had free electricity through the air a hundred years ago. That's what Tesla was doing. And they shut him down. He died penniless and insane once they figured out that he was like, wait a minute, power's gonna be free? No, no, no. Think about the one thing that hasn't changed. Those fucking sockets on your wall? That shit's been the same since, since you were a kid, since the 40s. That shit ain't never changed. They're never gonna get past that because the next step past that leads to free electricity. We can't have that, so we're gonna stay with that fucking plug in the wall. Tesla already had it figured out. Westinghouse invested in him and never gonna do it. Then they pulled the plug on him, no pun. So we're like, what about cars? Cars look exactly the fucking same as they did in the fucking 50s. Yeah, the body's a little different. Still rubber tires, still engine in the same spot. Engine's better, but it still looks the same. You see pictures of like 1940 or whatever, like in Hollywood, you, you see like a picture, old picture of the building when it was being built. It's the same shit. Street lights, curbs, streets, cars. It's the same shit. Houses. We still got these houses from 1930. With technology, the only thing we got that's, that's advanced is our phones. And that's designed to surveil us. This is self. They know exactly where we're at. And all the, if they said, oh, we need to find Joey Diaz. He's right here. And, he's, and we know exactly what he's thinking and what he's doing, what he's looking at. We have all his shit. And we were afraid of the RFD chip or whatever that thing is. Like, dude, that's a distraction. They, they ain't trying to chip nobody. They're trying to get you scared of the chip. So you don't even notice it. This is your chip, dude. This is your chip. RFD chip. That can't do, this does everything. This, you can look and it sees your face every day. It hears what you say. Every word you say, it hears. And we're walking around with it. That's why it's advanced. Because then this is where the technology needs to be is our fucking phones. So they have uh, tabs on us. But everything else, cars, same fucking thing. When I was a kid, cars were like, oh, 32 gallons of the mile. That's pretty badass. Guess what? Today it's still 32, 32 gallons a mile. You would think it'd be like 150 gallons a mile. Or, or miles to the gallon. I'm sorry. 150 miles. It's still 35 MPG. The ca cars is still cost the same. Gas is not that much more expensive. When I was a kid, it's like $1.52. It's like $4.350 now. Gas ain't going up like regular infl inflation. Cars is the exact same. Cars ain't, oh, they're a little faster, zero to 60 and fucking, you know, 2.3 or whatever. I mean, that, the technology is slow as fuck. The only thing that's advanced is our fucking phones. That's it, that's it, dude. You look around, it's the same shit. We're still rolling around in fucking rubber tires, cars, oh, doors open the same fucking way, still plugging into walls. We're still plugging our shit into walls. So, like, with te technology, the one I hear a lot is Facebook is, like, part of the government. Like, is that... That's totally true. You think all, so? all, like, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all of that shit is all Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley. It was all designed to surveil you. All of it. All of it is... is, is it's not for entertainment. They're not making... They, they could lose billions of dollars. Google, they're losing billions. YouTube losing... You think, you think they give a fuck? I can care less. That's that's us <coughs> surveilling ourselves for them. That's all that is. That's all not right, a, me, No one's me, even disputing that. No one's disputing that Google and Twitter and that. Th th why do you think they're all going after Trump? They're going after Trump because they're all on the same side. Let me ask you this. So I'm at home. I'm thinking about doing something to leave my legacy in the world. I'm not funny, I'm not athletic, but I'm smart and I, and I like army movies. So when I go online and I look up AK-47s, if they're surveilling us so much, you know, why don't we get a, a jump on it? It's like, when, I love when they say- Zach, that's a good question. I love that's when a... they say, today we thwarted a, an event in Michigan 
of another terror attack by some Arabs. Well, let me tell you something. I don't know if you know this. Arabs only talk to Arabs. Okay, they're not going to go see Lee and go, Lee, come here. You're a Jew. You hate these white people, too. They fuck <laughs> with your people. Hitler was half fucking Navajo Indian. <laughs> Whatever the fuck they want to tell you. You know what I'm saying? But uh, what I don't get is, like, when they say to you they thwart it, you know what they do? They, they, they hire a fucking Arab out of college, and they make him go into a mosque. And that's exactly what they do. And what it is, is what's that word when I set you up? There's a word for that? Entrapment. Yeah. They're all entrapment. Mm -hmm. It's all entrapment. It, yeah. It's not legal, but it saves lives. It's common sense gangster but it's mob mentality. You think about it. Like, like let's say, let's say we're in another dimension and uh, you're, you're running a country, but you're about to be indicted for some serious shit and your life is gonna be fucking over, dude. Some treasonous shit, like the worst shit, right? So, and someone says, someone says, hmm, we need a, I think if we clog the news cycles with some shit, I think that could help. What would you say? Would you say that was a good idea or nah? That's a fucking great idea. That's a great yeah. idea. Okay, so how do we do it? That's a good idea. Clog the news cycles. And then I said, I got a suggestion. We need, um, we need something super devastating to clog the news cycles. It's gotta be super devastating, right? Do you agree with that? Okay, mm -hmm. okay you agree? Okay, so we're good. Uh, now what's super devastating? Killing criminals or killing kids? Kids. Kids. We can't just like say, oh, a bunch of criminals were killed, right? It's gotta, the worst would be, something that would clog the news cycles would be devastating tugging at the hearts of every kill kids, right? Right. CIA whistleblowers have said this. this when, they, when they go to other countries and they're trying to overthrow a country, they blow up schools because they know people are going to fucking go. They, they blow up school buses. That's what CIA whistleblowers have said. That John Stockwell, you can watch him on YouTube. He wrote books about it. He goes, they go for the worst shit to cause the most damage so that people, so there's a, like the maximum public outrage, right? It's a good idea. I'm trying to save you. You're about to go down, dude. You're gonna get the death penalty. So for you, like, we want to clog the news cycles. You agree that that's a good idea, and then you agreed that uh, killing children's probably the best way, right? A, a mass shooting with children involved, right? Yes or no? Sure. Yes or no? Yes? Okay. All right, so um, how do we do that? How do we pull that off? If I said, what if I suggested, um, let's get some fucking crazy kid all pot, we, we, we go in through our database and we look for the crazy kids that have like a, a, a record of being a schizophrenic, right? Good idea or no? That poster child being Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah, good idea or no? So good far, idea. good ideas. If I say good bad idea. idea, I'll think of another idea. Good idea. I'm trying to save your life, right? Good idea, right? All right, so we take, we find a kid, we find him, we got a bunch of kids, we got two or three. Um, you know, and, and do we, like you have an adversary, a guy who's trying to take you down political enemy is it a, wouldn't it be a good idea if we made this kid a big fan of that motherfucker because he's going to go down for murder right and wouldn't it be good if we just like good idea or bad idea to make him uh, a, a soldier for your enemy good idea or bad idea good idea good idea good idea good idea yeah. it's a good great idea right or would it be a better idea if i made him a fan of yours no that's a bad idea bad idea it's gonna make you look bad this guy murders all these children families innocent people and he's a fan of yours no 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 that's a bad idea right bad idea right bad idea so good idea we make him fan of your political enemy right so how do we do that we get we have I, my my suggestion is just get like like a dude on him like a handler and we we we, we groom him we get him all into, he's crazy, schizophrenic. And then we get on his, on his social media and we start posting positive shit about your enemy. And then he's all down for your enemy. He's down to kill for your enemy. Good idea? He's down to kill for your enemy, right? Oh, fuck yeah, perfect, right? Or bad idea? Bad idea or good idea? It sounds, but then this, this past weekend they had both sides. Good idea, no, this is a fantasy. Oh, okay, This it. is a fantasy. So yeah, good bad idea. I, good idea, right? Good idea, Great right? Idea. 
So, but this guy's fucking crazy. How are we gonna get him to the to the mall to shoot people? He don't. How are we gonna how, do? We what if he shows up and he just drops the gun and freaks out? He's crazy. What do we do? We Put him on roller skates. I don't fucking know. Tell me what we're gonna do. Uh, here's right? my idea. Hit my me. idea. We get some fucking mob professional hitmen to go in there, spray some shit, cause it so for sure people get killed. Because if we give him a gun, he ain't gonna halfway through the parking lot, he might freak out. So we gotta get him, we walk him into the mall. This is just an idea. We get professionals to spray, get the fuck out, and then we throw him in. Cops come grab him. Good idea or bad idea? It's a good idea. And do you think I I, you think I just made that up? Like, you think no one else has made that up? Like, I just made that up? Well, how, like, okay. How does, how do people live with themselves? There's a fantasy world, right? Though. But, like, let's say. I'm not saying that that's what happened. I'm just saying, if you had to clog up the news cycles to save your ass, wouldn't that be a good idea? It'd be a good idea, but I'm just saying, like, and maybe there's just people who can do it, but how do, like, if, if it's CIA or whoever it is, if they're the ones killing kids, how are they, like, not fr- killing themselves and do you like, do you believe that there's hired assassins who don't give a fuck who they they'll kill? kill kids they'll kill anybody kill is there people like that do people I like guess. that maybe people like that don't exist i don't know if there's people like that that exist that are hired killers hired assassins that they get paid million dollars whatever five hundred thousand, whatever if there's people like that that exist do you think they need work yeah they need work and who would they need work from like uh, shady ass individuals like maybe the mob maybe the mob got hit man they'll kill anybody they don't give a shit there's ice cold killers out there. they'll kill anybody Fuck. for money right so the idea is you you have a whole list of those motherfuckers you're running a country you have a fucking list of 40 of those motherfuckers that you need to go out if you need someone gone you have guys that are just say you know just like uh john wick or some shit you know what i mean Maybe they don't exist. I'm talking about this is a fantasy world. This is a fantasy world. If you had to clog up the news cycles to bury some shit coming out on you. That's what, were we bur- that, that would, what were we burying this weekend by accomplishing? There's a lot of stuff. I'll pass on date. What was getting buried? I'm not saying, I'm just saying that it's just a coincidence, right? I, this is what I'm saying. If my mom got killed or my wife and son got killed, I would want to know how the fuck it really went down. If the cop, if the first official story said this, this is the guy who killed him, I would say, okay, fuck that guy. I've, you know, he, he killed my fucking family. But if other people are saying, dude, there was multiple motherfuckers, I wouldn't be mad at them for saying there was multiple motherfuckers and they want to really get down to who really, I would say like, let's fuck, I'm with you. Let's fucking find out who really killed my son. You know what I mean? I would be like, you, how dare you say that? That's so disrespectful. I'm like, no, thank you. Thank you. There was multiple shooters. Are you sure? Let's look into it. Let's look into it. Not like get mad. It's too soon. You can't say that. What the cops said it was one guy. They said, The news said it was one guy. Why are you saying it was? Witnesses said there was multiple shooters. So I would want to know if my family was killed. I would want to know what the fuck is up with the multiple shooters. Well, what would... What were they covering up for this week? By a lot of D class going down, a lot of D class, a lot of people going down for framing Trump in the Russian collusion scandal. It's all coming down text message. D that's what the D class. When you hear the FISA D class, they frame Trump, and that's treasonous, and that's death penalty. When you find out all the players involved, it's scary. It's Game of Thrones shit, dude. Heads will roll. That's why they're doing this crazy ass shit. In my opinion. It's a beautiful fucking thing. How's jujitsu going? It's going great. What is it's going great? EBF? I got killers all over the world. Speaking of, <laughs> yeah. speaking of murder, you know? What is the next EBI? Um, the next, uh, my next show is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday, uh, August 18th in Long Beach. You can get your tickets at inchbyinch.tv. It's the middleweight uh, world Championship Combat Jiu Jitsu. It's, ju- it's gangster Jiu Jitsu, the most gangster form of Jiu Jitsu there is. Jiu Jitsu, no gi Jiu Jitsu, sub only Jiu Jitsu with palm strikes to the uh, head and body on the ground. When you're on the ground, you could you could wail on each other. Can you get knocked out? Hell yeah, Jesus. What about EBI? 
EBI, it will be back end of 2020 or 2021. Why? It'll be back. It's coming back. Where uh, established, my first mission was Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. It, EBI was, that was uh, Plan B. I wanted to establish a league of combat jiu jitsu. I couldn't get the rules I needed or the rules I wanted passed through the commission because they didn't know what it was. They just didn't understand it. They wanted it in a cage and a th a three three minute rounds. I wanted it outside of a cage and one 10 minute round. They, they just didn't know, they just didn't give it to me the way I wanted it. So I just said, fuck it, I'll just do, I'll just bypass the commission and just do sub only. So that's where EBI came. So EBI was like, cause I couldn't get combat jujitsu off the ground. And <clears throat> then after about, I don't know, it was like nine or 10 EBIs, I went back to the commission. I said, I asked him again, I go, can I do combat jujitsu the way I wanted to, you know, a couple years ago when I approached you guys? And they were so um, cool. They say, yes, let's do it. Just the way I go, I wanna do it, not in a cage. I wanted to do it just like, because Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds is EBI. It's exactly like EBI with palm strikes. It's e there's Everything's the same. 16-man tournament, just like EBI. 10-minute regulation rounds, just like EBI. All submissions allowed, just like EBI. Overtime, EBI OT, exactly like uh, EBI. Exact same overtime, exact same regulation, exact same format, 16-man bracket. It's exactly the same as EBI, except there's palm strikes added, so it's more gangster. It's it's a big step um, towards realism. It's a closer to MMA than ever before. It's it's on its way to MMA, which means it's on it's more realistic than jujitsu without strikes. So it it is EBI with a turbocharger. You're doing great things in the jujitsu world. Thank you. Did you listen to John Jock on Rogan? Hell yeah. I didn't listen to Hell yeah. How oh, dude. Are you kidding? What's he talking about, that fucking lunatic? Dude, he was talking about how um, they used to do combat jiu-jitsu back in the 80s, and 70s and 80s in, in Brazil. He goes, that's what we used to do. We used to, after we trained with our gi for a couple hours, everybody would take off their gi top, and then we'd do jiu-jitsu with palm strikes. So combat jiu-jitsu is actually old school Brazilian jiu-jitsu, the way they used to do it back in the day in Rio de Janeiro. Carlson, Gracie, Jean-Jacques, they all did it. They called it taparia. That means, okay, let's, it, it basically means combat jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu with strikes. And so that, I'm basically bringing back old school jiu-jitsu training. More realistic, you know. There's a lot of things you can do uh, or a lot of things you can't do uh, as well when there's strikes, when you're doing jujitsu. So a lot of times, you know, whew, there's, um, you know, I mean, Roger Gracie himself, the great Roger Gracie said, 80% of jujitsu is useless in MMA. He said that. That's a famous quote from Roger Gracie. He's talking about gi jujitsu, of course. 80% of BJJ is useless in MMA. Roger Gracie, you know what I mean? To me, that's a problem. To me, that's a problem with the martial arm. Like, I don't want my my jujitsu to be eighty percent useless in a real fight. You know, and MMA is about as close to a real fight as you can get. You know, so um, there's a problem there. So what I've always worked on is trying to fix that problem. Trying to make your jujitsu training uh, as close and as real as close to MMA as possible and as realistic as you can possibly get without actually doing like brain damage, you know what I mean? So that's why the 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu style is uh, clinch based, um, very clinchy base, very no space, we don't want space. We want to clinch, uh, you know, to um, A, and uh, first and foremost, defend your, yourself from being knocked out. You know, if you clinch on someone, it's very hard to get knocked out. You know, just like in boxing, you know, when a guy's getting hurt, what does he do? He just clinches, and then they got the refs got to declinch him. The clinching is a, a safety technique, and most of my jujitsu is based on clinching, staying safe and moving, squeezing, clinching, smashing, crushing, squashing, squeezing, sucking, fucking, <laughs> drinking, eating. <laughs> you grow tits, yeah. wear hair on them. Yeah. yeah. Where's your next dates? 
Um, this Friday, I'll be in uh, Tinfoil Hat Comedy. Me and Sam Tripoli and XG will be in Indianapolis this Friday. And then Saturday, we'll be in um, St. Louis. Louis for a 420 show. So we're doing a like an afternoon show. We did an afternoon show in Tacoma, and to be honest, I didn't know how the fuck it was gonna turn out. I'm like, man, this could be a disaster. A Saturday afternoon show at 420, and it was sold out. I was like, holy shit, let's try a couple more of these motherfuckers and see what happens, you know? Because that way you can just get on a late flight and get the fuck home afterwards. So, um, yeah, so, and then, um, we got Bakersfield coming up. If you go on my Instagram at Eddie Bravo ten p one zero p, um, I got all my dates up there. You could just click on one of those comedy flyers and got Bakersfield coming up, San Francisco coming up, Portland. Oh, oh the Improv, the twenty third Friday, the twenty third. Me, Tony Hinchcliffe, and Sam Tripoli are doing the Improv, and that's about it. You're a bad motherfucker, Eddie Bravo. I'm happy you took the time out. <laughs> Thank you, man. Came Anytime. over. We'll get into Epstein next time and what's going on with that fucking. Nah, no one cares about that, dude. Fuck that. Oh, they no, all care. No they one cares. Care. Nobody cares about they that. They all shit. care because they were People all over care. there jumping up and down. Yeah. No and that motherfucker's got those puppies. Yeah, hopefully, they find puppies and people will they fucking. Got, yeah, people care. They got yeah. video. That dude's got. He didn't, he ain't going on into the night softly. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. Nobody that fucking connected goes into the night softly. <laughs> I will be this weekend, Friday, Lincoln Theater in D.C. It's gone, and the Borgata in Atlantic City. It's gone too. Then I got September 13th, Friday the 13th. There's still tickets available. In Dallas, motherfucking Texas, at the Majestic Theater, San Antonio's gone. And then there's still tickets available for the end of the month at a great show at the Chicago Theater in the beautiful motherfucking city of Chicago. What's my boy's name in Chicago? Josh. Josh Passini, 10th Planet Chicago. Josh Passini, 10th Planet Chicago. (laughs) He'll pick me up and take me for my fucking hot... Like his family's cousin owns the fucking good place. Yeah. So I'm excited about the next two months and of comedy. One more thing. I got, um, you know, most people don't know that I produce music as well. So you can go on YouTube and listen to, uh, if you're interested in my music. Uh, it's called, my album's called Mix Flick of Death and Devotion. It's for free. It's on YouTube. There's about 15 songs on it, all with uh, music videos cut from my favorite movie. So it's... Uh, Go check it out. You'll like Eddie's it. an artist of sorts. All right, you bad motherfuckers. I want to thank my man, Eddie Bravo. I want to thank the Christ Killer. But most importantly, I want to thank you fucking savages for always having my back, always supporting the show, and always fucking understanding what we're trying to do here. First, a word from our sponsors. 23 of me. Listen, we're living in an incredible time. You know me. Like I said in the beginning of the show, I'm an only child. I didn't know nothing about nothing. But with 23 and Me, I spit in a tube and bang. I found out a ton about myself and the people I came from. DNA testing can tell you a lot. Where your ancestors are from and how much Neanderthal blood you got running through your veins. But did you know that you could also learn about your health? With 23 and Me Health and Ancestry Service, you can learn how your genes affect your health. Get access to 125 personalized health reports. Find out if you're predisposed to type 2 diabetes, blood clotting, or high cholesterol. DNA doesn't lie. And ladies, you can also find out if you have the BRCA gene, which can lead to breast cancer. That's a big one. The sooner you know, the sooner you can do something about it. So do me a favor. 23andMe reports do not diagnose diseases to describe likelihood of developing any disease. 23andMe tests selected genetic variants only. 23andMe.com right now. So visit them and put in slash church for important test information. And order your health and ancestry kit today at 23andMe.com slash church. And you can meet your genes in 125 plus personalized genetic reports. That's number 23andMe.com slash church find out who you are go to 23andme.com slash church the church is also brought to you by and we'd love to welcome them stance socks listen now when you show a little ankle you're showing off what makes you special see whatever you're into they got the design whether it's star wars socks harley davidson socks 
They even have Grateful Dead inspired socks. Every football team, baseball team, and basketball team, they got that too. It's not just cool colors and patterns. Stance has everything. From running socks, ankle socks, hiking socks, and premium socks you can wear at the office. Plus, Stance socks are incredibly comfortable. I got them on right now, and I'll tell you what. They're supportive. They're the most supportive socks I've ever owned in my life. <clears throat> That's why Stance socks are the official sock of Major League Baseball. And those guys are on their feet, what, 160 games? Yeah, so you, you do the math. And they give back their Socks for Heroes program, send socks to deployed military personnel all around the world. I got my Icon socks myself and for my wife, and I got a cute little ankle socks like she likes. And even got the Flying Jew some nice blue socks that say good vibes on them so they remind them what's important in life. All right. Long story short, Stance makes a great gift. Right now, just for the church family, Stance has a great offer. Besides, I got you New England ones anyway. Thank you. They're just coming pretty soon. Go to stance.com slash church. And you'll get a free pair of socks with any purchase. That's right, free. Free pair of socks with any purchase when you go to stance.com slash church. C-H-U-R-C-H. This offer is only available for a limited time. So get your socks now at stance.com slash church. Because if they're not stance, they're just socks. So do me a favor. Throw those old white gym socks that smell like 10 dead, I don't know what, cats away. And go to stance.com slash church. I want to thank Stance. I want to thank 23 and me, but most importantly, I want to thank you savages for always having our back. It's plain and simple. I'll see you this weekend, Dallas, at the, uh, not Dallas, what the fuck am I saying? I'll see you at the Lincoln Theater Friday night, and I'll see you at the motherfucking Borgata. I'm only doing one show, so there's a meet and greet. There's no misunderstandings like in Milwaukee and people get pissed off. I love you, motherfuckers. I'll see you Monday, tip-top, motherfucking Magoo, ready to go. Shoot the fucking dog. Let's do this shit. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. Again, the church uh, sends their prayers and hearts out to the families in Dayton and El Paso. All right? Kick this motherfucking mule, Lee.